We've got lots of stuff to cover, and uh, I was just very deeply excited about what we've seen so far. I love the idea of controlling cars and controlling mobiles together with that kind of thing. Now, if all of them were open source, that would be even better. And I heard it's open source, and I never expected a company like Ford to come up with that. And I, I'm really excited about this. But now back to the stuff that I'm supposed to talk about, which is supercharging HTML5 with Firefox OS. Now, what are challenges in mobile? What are the problems that we're trying to solve in the mobile space that we keep getting and we keep hearing from people? The first one is a worldwide coverage. I'm traveling continuously. I live in England. I've done uh, 500,000 miles in the air last year. And I've got, I'm the car owner of 16 different SIM cards that I have to put into my phone in different countries to get access to the internet. And I always love these little things that you get 6,000 free text messages in 40 hours on the phone. I just want data. That's what I want. I want connectivity. The other problem is that applications have to be lightweight. Hardware is a good thing nowadays, like the smartphones that we get, like the iPhones 5, the Nexus 4s. These are awesome, awesome things. But mobile devices worldwide and old mobile devices are not so good. They're basically really, really bad processors with really good video cards in them. So our applications should be lightweight, and especially when they come down the wire in a country where the connectivity is limited to certain gigabytes per month or megabytes per day, or it's just really, really expensive to download things on a mobile connection. We have to have context-specific interfaces. There's no point putting a mobile interface with buttons this big on a tablet this big, because you have buttons like that, and nobody needs that. We have to find a way to actually give people the right interface at the right time to make the most effective with the hardware that they have. And if that's a keyboard, then it's not three buttons on the screen, but it's actually something where I can type something. We have to have a simple distribution. It has to be easy for us as app developers to put things out there and people to get it and not be told, like, oh, you're not the right country for this app. Sorry about this. You don't have a credit card. Sorry about this. We want people to get our stuff, that's why we create it, and we want to be send it out, we want to be able to send it out to other people. And we need developers. There's, there's a massive shortage of developers everywhere on this planet, and especially in the Silicon Valley, especially in Germany, especially in England. And it fascinates me when people whine about how bad their job as a developer is, seeing how many job offers you get every single day. No other market is like that. So we need developers for apps to build these cool apps in the mobile market. And nothing of that is new. <laughs> nothing of that is new. We have it. It's called the frigging internet. And we had it for about 14, 15, in my case, 16 years, building things on it that are available worldwide, that are very low, uh, low key when it comes to the memory footprint and the, the data footprint, that actually work distribution wise because they're distributed already, they are on the internet, and they don't, they're not in a closed market where I have to get access to. So we learned all that stuff before, we've used it for years, and then in mobile space we just want to use it as well. And that was the big thing about HTML5. We're now adding another number to HTML4, or actually 0.99 number to HTML401, and make it a new thing, and that is mostly mobile. The first advertising of HTML5 was all about that is a web for mobile. And it wasn't, it was just an upgrade of HTML4 to give you more app-specific things that you needed to have to build apps for the mobile space. And it started with really good promises, like um, my uh, 2007 iPhone came out and he was up on stage and basically said, there's no SDK required. This is the web, it has the best browser on this planet on it called Safari. But he basically said, no SDK. You can write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you can build your apps. And we were like, yes, this is what we want. This is awesome. We can use what we've learned for six, seven years and just put it on a mobile device. And then we started trying it out. And we were like, yeah, we got this. This is how it works. You just take it out there and see what comes. And then, like, <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite do it. But we didn't get access to the phone. We didn't get access to the telephone. We didn't get access to the maps like we wanted to. We did get the speed that native apps have on these phones when you write HTML5, because we're in the middle of a web view, of a web view rather than a native environment. And there's more and more of these barriers dropping up. There was a bit of big marketing hype about HTML5, and then we realized like we can't access the accelerometer, we can't access the camera, we can't access the battery level, all these things that would be interesting for us as app developers. We have outdated soft browsers. As web 
Android developers, we have this favorite thing to hate, which is Internet Explorer 6. But I actually hate the soft browser on Android much, much more. Because this thing is much younger and repeats the same stupid mistake of connecting a browser with the operating system and making it dependent on the upgrade of the operating system to get a new browser. And if your phone is not good enough, you don't get a new operating system, you're stuck on an old browser. And as an HTML5 developer, I'm stuck with that thing. Second class performance literature, like HTML5 is not as fast as native development. Lack of interoperability with the OS. I cannot just yeah, say, like, hey, give me the phone app of the OS and talk to that one. Doesn't work. Works in tens in Android, doesn't work on the web. And that's why we came up with Firefox OS. Mozilla is definitely the web open and available for everybody out there. And we did that on the desktop of Firefox, uh, made sure that Internet Explorer is not the only browser out there and we all can use the web outside of offices. And then we said, okay, keep it on the phone as well. And we completely started from scratch. And we said, we cannot just do something like Android or iOS. We have to bring the web to devices rather than devices to the web. So the first thing we have in Firefox OS is predictable browser support because it's Firefox. It's not a stock browser. It's not something that is wired to an operating system. It's Firefox. Nothing else is on that phone for you. All your apps are written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You have, a, you have a, 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 a Linux layer under it to talk to the hardware, but the browser and the operating system is one of the same thing, and that is Firefox. So all the innovation that goes into Firefox came from hardware and research, and goes into Firefox as well with what we learn on Android, what we learn on the desktop. And it gives you an old new market because it's worldwide. There is no such thing as like, oh, this is not available in your country. Because you can distribute apps, so you can distribute websites. You can download apps like you can download websites or PDFs or whatever you wanted to download from the web. You can listen in our marketplace, but you don't need to. And we target explicitly for the countries that don't have iOS, that don't have Android, that couldn't afford an iPhone, but are actually allowed to be on the web. Why should we, why should be a rich person's game to be on the mobile web? Why should I have to have this new thing and replace it every three months? when I can afford a phone once a year. And I want to be on the web and just talk on Facebook, take pictures of what my government is doing to protesters and put them up on the web. Everybody should be allowed to have a voice on the web. And if there's a barrier of very expensive hardware, if there's a barrier of a like, marketplace that forces you to have, a, to have a credit card, that's not fair and that's not right. And that's why we made Firefox OS. So we're upgrading the mobile world. We're upgrading we're replacing feature phones, we're replacing the old Motorola's, the old Nokia's. We're not fighting iOS, we're not fighting Android. If they're going to become extinct because of our things, great, not going to happen, I think, anytime soon. But we want these things to go away. It's not nice that people can just play savings and send text messages when they could have web connectivity with these devices or similar devices for a different, similar price. We're targeting new emerging markets, very affordable hardware, no credit card needed. So my brother in Germany doesn't have a credit card. I keep him to send him like things in the Apple store because he doesn't want to have a credit card. Web technology is through and through. There's nothing to Java in there. There's no Cocoa in there. There's no Objective-C in there. 80 mobile partners, five hardware partners. That's actually our data. We've got seven hardware partners now and 20 mobile partners. And this is where this thing is going live. And that's actually next month. You have access to the full hardware. We, all these dots here are actually directly linked to, uh, uh, to Barcilla, showing you how the implementation of open web APIs, open web standard APIs that have access to the hardware happen right now. These are in Firefox, they're also, they're also openly available to other browsers. So if you look those APIs, like for example the Web Vibration API or the Geolocation API, are implemented across browsers now as well. This is not for Firefox, this is for the web. And this is for bringing the web to every device out there. We have a marketplace where you can list your apps, so people like marketplaces, I think they're rather pointless because they're just a supermarket for apps, but well, the web is already a supermarket for apps if you think about it. But people like marketplaces and there's like the monetization is built and everything. And the really cool thing that we have is that you can find apps by content. Why should I have to know the name of an application? Why should you, as an application developer, spend money on getting people to know the name of your app when all they want to know which app tells you where I can get pizza, which app tells you what movie is going on? 
So the content search in Firefox OS, which actually I need to use my computer for, is this. You swipe to the right, and instead of just going the, getting the apps that are on your device, you get apps on the internet. You enter, for example, the name of a band, and you get, you get different apps that have to do with music, or Wikipedia knowing about the band, or YouTube having videos of it. You then click the app and start listening to the music. You like the app, you, you install it, you buy it. You don't like the app, you discard it. And you don't have to do the whole loop that you do with other dating platforms where you have to download 20 meg of an uh, app, have it downloaded, install it, don't like it, uninstall it. This is stupid. This is what we have with floppy disks and CD-ROMs. We shouldn't have to do that on, on a device that is already connected to the internet. So all your mobile optimized websites right now become the advertising for your app. So if, uh, if Speedman Online, for example, want to do a Firefox or S app, all they have to do is write a manifest file and advertise it on Speedman Online. If I don't to go to a marketplace, find Speedman Online, download it, install it. You define a manifest file that gives you the name, the description, where your icons are, what access to the hardware you want to have, and that way we, that way we find your application and people can install your application. There's three other access, there's hosted applications, these are the ones that are in the marketplace, and these are the ones that are on your server. They don't get access to all the hardware because of security. We cannot allow you to do telephone calls from your server because I don't know if your server has been hacked. You can, uh, we, our, our infrastructure is secure. Our infrastructure gets tested. All the apps that go in will be tested for security. So we can give you these kind of access levels that we don't have with your hosted app. Also, of course, who can you control it? You change the index HTML, you change the app cache, you put your images in, we don't have to worry about the maintenance of it, that's on your behalf. Privileged apps are the ones that are in the marketplace and are actually from the hosted up servers. And the certified apps are apps that we do with our partners like Deutsche Telekom and others that get full access to the hardware, but they're part of the operating system. You mostly will not write a certified app. Where are you guys? Hosted apps, the ones that are on your server, that are just websites with a wrapper around it, get access to all these cool things. Vibration API, mouse lock, uh, network information, index CP, 15 megabyte of data for, for every, for every uh, different app. Uh, proximity sensor, how far is the user away from the phone? How far are two phones away from each other? Ambient light sensor, how far is it outside the phone? These kind of things, all of these that make phone interesting as a platform are available to you. If you want to install an application from the web and not host it on the marketplace, this is all the code you have to write. You just point to the manifest file, you have an on-success handler, you have an on-error handler, and you're done. So whenever I try my apps out, I put it on GitHub, I don't even use my own server, write this kind of code, install it on my phone, try it out, and I'm happy with it or not. <coughs> Privileged apps, if you host them with us, you actually get device storage, which means you can uh, write photos to the SD card rather than to an index DB. You have a browser API where you can do browsing inside your app. TCP socket if you want your chat client. Contacts API, you can generate new content, uh, contacts and read from the contacts. And system access drive is important because you can access any, uh, any API outside of the server then. Certified apps get all the rest. Web telephony, making a telephone call in Firefox OS is basically navigator.mos uh, telephony call telephone number. That's all it needs to do, and the phone will call that number. But the problem is, of course, you don't want people to actually have to go there and, and allow your app to do all these things. This is the security hole that we have in the whole market right now. It's like every puzzle game asks for access to everything on your phone because they cannot change that dynamically afterwards. So people give, give, give uh, stupid puzzle games access to their apps who can wonder when their friends get spammed. So we should not have to do that. So another thing that we built in and is available already is uh, web uh, activities. Web activities are the same as activities in Android. Instead of doing the telephone call on your behalf, I just send a telephone number to the phone. And the phone then says, okay, what do I do with telephone numbers? I go to the dialer app and you can actually send off the call. You hang up the call and it goes back to your application with a data set telling us how long the call was and which number was called. So you have a full loop, rather than just a tell domain or something like that on iOS, you have the full control of sending the user somewhere and then back. This user pick uh, option, saying like, I want to have a photo. 
I want another photo. I don't care where your photo comes from. If it comes from your wallpaper folder or your images or you take a photo with your camera, I just want another photo for my app. And I shouldn't force you to use a certain service or an interface that you don't like. You probably have an app on your phone already that takes pictures that you love know, and you like it's in your face. So why should I try to replace that app that you love with something that you don't like that is extra work for me? So all I have to do here is call a web activity and even the ones that are available. And in this case, I call a mock activity called Kit and I give it as data the, uh, the image domain types of the things that I expect. So a PNG, a JPEG, or a JPEG with a real writing. And this one actually results in the interface that you've seen before. This interface telling you, hey, this is where photos come from on your phone. I don't know that. I have no idea that you had a wallpaper folder, and I don't care. I don't want to have access on that. This is yours to take. This is your control. This is your private stuff. I am not the government. I don't want to read your emails. I am totally fine with you giving me the email that you chose to give me. And when once you have it, then you can create an image and you actually set the result block type of image and you put it into the URL, to the URL and you got an image in your file. That's how easy it is to get an image into your applications from the phone. And this works across everything. This is hosted apps. You can read that on GitHub, you can read that on your own server. We gain access to the web activities because you don't get access to the hardware. The user is still in control because they do the last picking on saying like, no, I'm not giving you a photo. And then you get an error handler, you don't get a photo. These activities and hosted apps also work on Android right now. So if you put Firefox on Android, uh, Firefox for Android on your Android device to make it awesome and not only Android, you also get these kind of things. And it's also supported back to Droid. So if you've got a really old Android that doesn't get the newest Android, great, you can still get that. Same with, uh, uh, with Opera. Opera is also available to really old Androids, whereas Chrome is. If you want to get started with this, there's a developer hub that will actually this design principles of good HTML5 applications, which also can be applied to Windows apps, to, uh, to Blackberry apps, or whatever apps you want to build. There is a demo app set that you can download that are open source. You can just change the colors to it, put your logo in, and say, like, look what I've done. And there's build principles. How do you build the operating system yourself? How do you actually build applications and store them in the marketplace? And there is a publish, uh, publishing guideline where it's like, how do you make money with the apps? How do you get them into the marketplace? What kind of monetization models are there? What kind of technology is available to you? There's a simulator in the browser. If you don't have a phone that is uh, some older Android phones, for example, could be refreshed with Firefox OS, or there's a developer phone available as well. You can just use the simulator. That's an add-on for Firefox. You just install the add-on. You've got a Firefox OS on your desktop. You can build 90% of your app that way. You don't have to do any connection with ADD or anything like that. But you can now, in the new simulator, just connect your phone and it will show up. And the reader saying, like, oh, I found a device. Do you want to send this app to the device as well? So this is already built in. Phones for developers. Speedphone.com is a company that actually builds phones for uh, 95 euro or 105 euro, depending which one you want. That gets sent uh, Europe-wide from Europe and America-wide from Europe as well, although it's faster in Europe. And these are the phones that actually have the same specifications of the phones that our partners are bringing out, partners like Deutsche Telekom, Telefonica, and a few others. So, all in all, nothing here is actually new. Nothing here means you have to write Firefox OS apps. You have to write web apps. Real HTML5 web apps, not hindered by an operating system that tells them to, like, eh, eh, that's not for you, you've got to learn Java, ha, ha, ha. No, I don't want it. I've done this for years, and I love it, and I want to do it. And this is what it is. It's an upgrade of the mobile web, because we took the hardware barriers away from you, and we give you a way to distribute your apps worldwide. We give you an, an, an option to build your marketplace if you wanted to. The marketplace is also an API. But please don't build 10,000 marketplaces. We have enough of those. Most providers that did their own marketplace failed you. So, this is on the web with it, and it's, it's there. You have a whole new audience. We're not marketing this where people are already bored with mobile phones. We're marketing this where people have snake and send text messages to each other. And it's going to be their first impression of the web, the first time that they use the web. Because a lot of people don't have a desktop computer anymore, they start with a mobile device. And that mobile device should not be an Android that just gives them like 60 year old technology because that's the only thing that is affordable to them. 
that should be a king apps device that allows you to build cool apps for them and be the first Angry Birds for them and be the first Instagram for them and these kinds of things. It's HTML5 without knockout. All of this is open APIs. They are available to other browsers as well and get implemented in other browsers. Your website is your app. You're already publishing in, in, in Firefox. If you have a website, you're already publishing. We can actually help you to get the same for an app if you want to. Just put a wrapper around it, you're fine. Minimal extra work, it works across platforms. So uh, turning a Firefox OS app into a, a Windows 8 app is being done by people. We have a lot of people that turn web OS apps into Firefox OS apps because they want to have an operating system that's available to them. And that's all we have time for. So thanks very much.